Not long ago, I was teaching with a colleague from the emergency department. David and I were showing medical students how to examine a throat. And it wasn't long before some of them were describing their most recent episodes of sore throat. When one of them just began to describe her episode, David perked right up and he said, you had peritonsillar abscess, didn't you? How did you know that? Is what she said. And so did the rest of us. Well, what happened there was David was acting like an expert. So let's take this apart. When we asked David, so how did you know that? His answer was the kind of answer you'll only get from the most wise and humble of teachers. That is, I don't know, is what he said. And he said, maybe it has something to do with the 20 years I spent in the emergency department. Well, he's right. He's right about both those things. One, he didn't know because probably some of that information is unconscious. And number two, yes, it has something to do with years of establishing the kind of patterns that you're able to recognize even subconsciously when it comes to making a diagnosis. So how does that happen? Well, over years of seeing people present with the same sort of thing, maybe sore throat, and then seeing certain episodes of sore throat that turn out to be something else, you start to put together the signs, the symptoms, sometimes quite subtle. Maybe it was something in the way that the patient said that they were experiencing the sore throat, or maybe it was something they did in the way they held up their hand to their throat. Those things get established, sometimes subconsciously, so that later on you can recognize those patterns and say, hey, wait a second, that sounds like, and have a diagnosis. In a way, it's not very different from, let's say, a three-year-old recognizing this. How, how does the three-year-old know that that's a dog? If you ask the three-year-old, I'm sure they won't be able to tell you. In the same way, I bet you a portion of the people who are watching this video will be able to recognize the patterns in this. How do they recognize those patterns? And how do they know what to do with those patterns? Well, one thing's for sure. They spent a lot of years figuring out how to do that. And they started with very simple steps. But now they're at the point where if you ask them, so how come you can just sit down and play that? Well, they'll have a hard time explaining it because it's become, in a way, unconscious. All right, so how is this helpful? Experts can do stuff almost subconsciously, and sometimes that's how they recognize the patterns that present, and that's how they come up with diagnoses. How is that helpful to me? I'm just starting out, you're saying. Well, I'll give you two reasons. One reason why this is helpful to know is the next time you're with a physician who pulls up a diagnosis seemingly out of thin air when it's something you hadn't even thought of, well, don't feel so bad. It took years of experience for them to be able to do that. Second thing, and probably most important about this, is because this is a good way, in fact, this is an established way that experts come up with diagnoses, it's a good idea to start studying and thinking about illnesses in patterns from the very beginning. In other words, when you learn something from anatomy, when you learn something from pathophysiology, or when you learn something from organ-based teaching, it's important to make the connection between what you're learning and real illnesses and the way they present. And that's what we're gonna be helping you to do in the family medicine course. We're gonna give you some simple outlines that will help you figure out, hmm, when somebody comes in with a cough, how can I boil that down to a differential diagnosis? When somebody comes in with chest pain or abdominal pain, how can I do the same? These simple outlines will help you to start make those connections between anatomy and signs and symptoms that patients present with and the potential diagnoses that are most common. So believe it or not, even in this very early stage of your learning, you'll be able to make some pretty good guesses about what could be going on, almost like an expert, and you won't need the 20 years to do it. 